Trying to make that message 
clear. Now, it's not easy to put that message across, because I don't have a degree in statistics, and they try and tell me I do, but I don't. And it's not very easy to understand it. But I try to make that in, in sort of accessible language, so you can spread the word, okay? Jeremy Hunt did say that. We said no. We said this weekend effect is basically like, and I analogize it to buying an ice cream on a sunny day, okay? If you buy an ice cream on a sunny day, you've got an ice cream, it's sunny. You're also more likely to get sunburn on a sunny day. Does that mean that buying the ice cream has given you sunburn? I leave that question out of here. <laughs> so I must, start, I must say, why have we waited so long to talk to you now? Now, I'm going to give you the honest truth. Doctors are pretty rubbish at being in a union, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't really know what a union was until last year. I certainly hadn't envisaged standing here and talking to you all as a result of being in the union. Now, We'd never relied on a trade union before particularly. We never really knew what it could do for us. We certainly didn't know what all of the trade unions together have the power to be able to do for us. We never needed to be in that situation. We've never had that thrust upon us to actually have to start being engaged. So we didn't come out and seek all of the trade unions initially. We hope that we can handle this on our own. Of course, it turns out that, uh, as Brian had said to me actually very early on in the days, this isn't going to go away overnight. And now here we are, six months later, it hasn't gone away overnight. Now we've realized you know what? We've made a mistake there. We actually need everybody's help. Okay? This is why I'm here today. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much for this. So I'm just going to give a little bit of a rundown, okay? I appreciate that I don't want to take up too much time. And it, um, do tell me, uh, Andrew, wherever you are, if I'm waffling, okay? Um, <laughs> thanks. So what are the outstanding issues? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's not about Saturday pay. Okay? That's pretty much exactly what the BBC says it is about, but it's not. Okay? There's a few details that I hope to explain. Do forgive me. If I see anyone dropping, you know, dropping down in, uh, asleep in front of me, I'll change my tack. Okay? The contract is not a simple beast. Okay? We don't really understand it. I, as, I've read through the vast majority of it to the extent that I'm thinking I'm going to fall asleep now. Okay? The current contract that we've got is not simple either. Nobody really understands that either. But what we do know is that it's going to make life difficult. This new contract that's proposed is going to decimate what's left of our morale, what's left of our energy. It's going to make a tired workforce even more tired. It's going to make doctors make more mistakes, not less mistakes. We cannot see that happen. We're already overstretched. We're already working well into our reserves. We're not getting paid to work into our reserves. We just do, because it's the kind of thing we do. I think we're quite nice people. I hope we are, anyway. This new contract is going to see us overstretched, OK? There's Various things in the contract that you need to have to stop abuse of the workforce. So penalties to the employer is one of these things, okay? The BBC are picking this up as Saturday pay, okay? If an employer is forced to pay you more for doing hours that you know are going to be dangerous for you to work, otherwise known as nights, weekends, and, and hours that are not good for lifestyle. Nobody wants to work every single weekend in a row. I appreciate some people do. But they tend to get a day off in the week. I appreciate that. We are seeing a contract imposed that is going to not penalise us as the workforce. This is doctors now, but it will be nurses, it will be ACAs, it will be radiographers, and everybody else in the system soon. We're seeing this contract imposed that is going to not penalise the trusted employers for working those hours. And that is dangerous, because they're going to be able to say, you guys are going to work every hour under the sun, and it's not going to hurt us. It's only going to hurt you or drive you away. So we can't see that. The government wants to replace this unsocial hours pay that I'm talking about. They get paid, the trust gets penalised 30% over the course of a year if a doctor has to work too many late, too many nights, etc. They're getting rid of that. They're scrapping that completely. But what they're selling it as is a 13% pay rise. Now, I ask you, anyone here who can subtract 30 from 100 and come up with a 13% pay rise, whether that makes any sense. It doesn't to me. Shift patterns, okay? I'm just going to quickly whiz through. It's normally a... No doctor works upwards of 90 hours a week. There might be one or two in the country, but realistically, they don't. Okay? What the government is pumping out in this contract is that this is going to be great because we're going to stop doctors. All doctors are going to be working 90 hours a week. We're going to stop that. That's actually a load of rubbish because nobody does that anyway. So what they've done is they've changed the target from something that doesn't happen to something else that isn't going to happen, but sold it as a good thing. And I see that and I think, well, you clever lot of sods. There was no real response to that in the media. In the media, it's reported as the government is reducing the number of hours a doctor's going to work. Isn't that a good thing? And that's about it, what they've left it at. We're a bit worried that we're not going to get these comp compensatory rest times, but I'm not going to go into that too much. There's a lot of detail on there. For goodness sake, don't go to the Conservative website and find out about it. And don't go to nhsemployers.com either, because theirs is very, very biased. It's sold as an incredibly good thing. The most useful place to look for this is the BMA. They've got a really, really good FAQ all about the new contract. It's definitely worth a read, and it will rile you up. So I've already talked about our safeguards. Just a very
very brief thing at the moment. The way the new, the way the current doctor's contract, for those of you who are interested, is monitored, is there is actually a system with a capital M called monitoring. If we are working too many hours over a certain amount of time, we can request that our hours are monitored by the trust, and the trust have to, by law, by the current contract, come in and say, okay, how many hours are you actually working? We're going to have to do something about this. Your employers are legally responsible to make sure that A, this doesn't happen, or B, if, it is, if it's unavoidable, we'll just have to pay you more. So it's obviously a penalty. The new thing is said, we'll scrap all of this official monitoring business. We're just going to replace it with a guardian of working hours, who is a non-executive, non-managerial member of staff basically means they don't have any power. And they get the chance to report to the board, I think possibly yearly, that there are doctors working too many hours. Now, as far as I can tell, that is going to be a dangerous and very, very scary prospect for any doctor who wants to have some form of support from his management from the hospital in terms of actually getting anywhere regarding their working hours. And I must admit, I think this is a dangerous, dangerous system. Sorry, I think my government's probably heard enough of me. I'm going to go on to morale. We can already see in the workforce the morale of doctors is low. Okay? We love treating patients. That's what we signed up to do. That's what we're there for. What we don't want is to be completely taken, well, taken the piss out of, basically, by a government that's saying, you know what, we know you work extra hours. We know you do all of this. We want you to do more of it and for a lot less money. It doesn't really talk. It doesn't really talk very well. It's just, sorry, is this thing working? Yes. Yeah. So that's all right. Um, what we don't want to see is doctor's goodwill eroded from underneath our feet. Because when the doctors are grumpy, everyone else is grumpy as well. I can tell you that. At 11 o'clock at night, I'm pretty grumpy. And I don't want to rub that off to every other doctor in the hospital and all of the members of staff as a result. And the other thing is, all of the members of staff know their neck. That's the serious thing. Okay? So, what are we seeing? Medication, medication, medical school applications are down by 13.5% this year. Applications from medical students to go into actual work are down by one and a half percentage. It might not seem like a lot, but that's, that's 6,000 people, yeah? 600, no, 60 people, not, okay? That's a lot of doctors when we really need more doctors. The number's going down from specialty training. So, for example, myself, I'm in a, I'm in a, a beginner's role at the moment. I'm a junior doctor. I'm a baby doctor. Junior doctors, by the way, stretch all the way from my level all the way to 15 years in the future when they're like six months from being a consultant not just people my age in this problem. Applications from people like me who are going to be going into specialty training have gone down significantly this year, so that's less than 44%, I think, people. Now, there are more gaps in the rotors. There are going to be problems in future with this new contract because people are simply leaving. People are simply saying, I've had enough of all of this. Right, I'm going to say there's a lot more to be talked about, but uh, I realize you haven't got all day. What can we be? What can we do to support? Why am I speaking here to you guys? That's the most important issue, and I haven't, I've left it to the end so I can make you remember it. Okay? We need all the help we can get. We don't know what's going to happen next. The BMA haven't even released a public plan as to what's going to happen next. We haven't got a clue. I myself included as one of the reps and a vice chair on the East of England Junior Doctors Committee. I haven't got a clue what's going to happen next, but we're pretty sure it's going to be slightly more than it's, that's already happened. Okay? We've got the support of our consultants still. They were there to help us in the hospital, but that we're eternally grateful. They're still going to be there to support us. A&Es are still going to be open, all right? What can I say? Talk to as many people as you can about all of this stuff. Read up from ver verifiable sources, not from NHS England. Don't read the Daily Mail. For God's sake, don't watch the BBC about it, okay? There's a lot about it around. <laughs> and we need the truth to be spread. Don't forget there is a lot of misinformation, okay? Use social media. Spread the words to friends and family. Spread the words to union colleagues, all of the people you work with, nurses, paramedics, auxiliary staff, everyone, teachers especially, you know, after what's been spread from yesterday, okay? We can do this together. We can stop this, decim this decimation of our public systems. It's an insidious attack. It's a spread of disaster, okay? We need to stop this insidious march to privatization. That's what we see. Save these British institutions we are so proud of. Just as a, this is a brief heads up, there's a meeting on Wednesday, 7 p.m. at the Friends Meeting House with all of, uh, hopefully with all the trade councils in Norwich, am I right, Brian, uh, to try and get, this, get the ball rolling on to how you can support us more. I'm going to finish by saying thank you very much indeed for your time. Please help us act now. Thank you.